Yes, chairs. Let's talk about chairs. Uh, full pun intended, chairs are the biggest issue in the fat community. Um, the amount of public spaces like doctor's offices, malls, whatever, places that have seating, restaurants, etc., never, ever have accessible seating. Some places just have stools, or some places just have armed, small, dinky-looking chairs. As a fat person, if you have never, ever done the following things, if you have never looked at a picture of a restaurant on Google Maps to try and figure out if the seating would be accessible to your size, if you've never broken a chair in a public space, especially. Yeah, listen, you gotta get some decent chairs in here, man. What's this shit made out of, anyway? Uh, steel? Yeah? Um, if you've never had to second guess whether or not it was okay to sit down in the chairs provided to you, if you've never had a panic attack at school because you couldn't fit in a damn chair desk situation, then you don't deal with fat phobia at the same level that the rest of us do. <laughs> that is the stupidest thing I ever heard of. Jesus Christ. So that large man breaks chairs because of his weight. So that's fat phobia. Okay, we're back. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you're all having an amazing day. Quick video and a disclaimer. Do not get triggered if you are a little overweight or a lot overweight. This video is not about you. It's not directed at you. It has nothing to do with you. We are simply here to expose the insane ramblings of these people that are promoting unhealthy and destructive lifestyles. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today's episode of Plus Size TikTok Fails. TikTok mm. is degenerate trash. Uh, Correct. You can say that again. TikTok mm. is degenerate trash. Uh. <laughs> well, I meant figuratively, not literally, but okay. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much for coming back. So it's been a few days since we've covered the uh, plus size TikTok fails. So, well, let's dive into that, you know, really quick today. So if you'd place your attention on the screen. I saw this tweet the other day, and this is what kind of made me want to do the plus size TikTok fails. And this is the picture attached to the tweet. Let me read it. Someone tweeted, Women who looked like this simply did not exist when I was growing up and into my 20s. Now it's now it's not uncommon. Look at it. I mean, really look at it. This is the result of an intentional poisoning of the population at many levels. This should be investigated, not normalized. I saw this picture and I happen to agree. And as you can see, the ass is on the front. Front butt. And I agree, this was uh, uncommon, you know, a couple decades ago when I was growing up. Nowadays, it's not uncommon at all to uh, see front butt. Um, and I agree as well, it is an intentional poisoning of our society. I think we all know we see this every day in these videos, the woke TikToks and all this other stuff. That's the same thing. It's all it's all intentional. It's all being done by design to make people unhealthy, confused, angry, divisive. This person has a yellow headband on that says F off. Like what so angry? Why do you gotta wear a headband that's telling people to F off? And a t-shirt says the struggle is real. I'm not sure which struggle that is for you, but uh Let's get into it. All right, before we get into this first one, if you're new to the channel, if this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button. Become a member of the greatest community on the YouTubes. That is you guys. Also, you guys already know, smash that thumbs up button. Like that comment section up. Share these videos out. Make sure that notification bell is on. And it says, things that baffle me as a fat woman. Roll the film, please. Things that baffle me as a fat woman, part one. I'm settling the debate all over TikTok. Everyone's saying, go from behind. What are you doing? You should be sitting down while you're doing that. That is not possible. The butt cheek is so wide. My arm is only so long. You get it if you get it. Any kind of seats. You can't convince me otherwise. 
the width, the material. There is a specific type of seat that I will trust with my life and then there is about 99% of seats that I won't. There is a specific spot in hell for a person that did this to us. I'm also not sure if there's supposed to be a weight limit on the tyres, but I've seen plus-size women having thicker tyres. So now, every time I go on my bike, I question my life. Also didn't help that I popped a tyre on the last time that I went on the bike, so... Didn't exactly build my confidence there. Washing your bits. Now, I'm not talking about the private bits. I'm talking about the bits that we get as fat women and men. The, like, flap of the tummy... Um, under the boobs, and not just the washing, but the aftercare. Like, do I deodorize under my belly flap? It's a question I'm not sure about. Should I be talcum powdering it? Because it all gets sweaty. It's just like an underarm. These are the questions that keep me up at night. And lastly, putting on your shoes. I need a shoe horn, but do I get one? No, because I'm in denial that every time I need to put shoes on, I need help. I don't think I've ever heard people talk about these things. Let's start the convo. Do you I don't know anything about what you're talking about. I don't know. Things that baffle me as a fat woman. Number one, wiping your hind parts, seats, which is like the first guy broke all the seats, bikes, particularly tires, washing your body bits, putting on your shoes, the rest of it's scratched out. But these are things that aren't supposed to be difficult unless you're like a real elderly person and have some sort of disability that you need help. Just as a regular, I'd say, I don't know, maybe middle-aged woman. I'm not sure about her. I, those are those are things that are supposed to be difficult. I I don't know. She seems like she's got a good sense of humor, so <laughs> we'll give her a pass. Let's keep it moving. Oh, and did I happen to mention? These all, all these people have one, one major thing in common. It's the uh, victim mentality. Roll the film, please. I'm finna talk my shit for a second. Um... Am I the only fat girl that's fat because they don't eat and not because they eat a lot? Let me explain. All my life, I have been on and off diets. I've been on about twenty diets since maybe um third grade to now, and all them shits didn't work because I had to eat three meals a day. I eat once and then I'm done because I'm not hungry anymore. Is that because of my diet history or is it because I'm just fucking hungry? And then and then most of the time when I do finally eat that one meal. I binge. I certainly do. And that's because I'm so used to being on diets where, oh, I got to hurry up and get this in because I might not get it another time because I'm about to start another diet. It's tra it's trauma. I just describe my trauma. I suggest you stop whining like a little bitch. Hey, where are the white women at? I don't think these people know what real problems are because that's not trauma. She just described her trauma because she's having trouble dieting and she's putting on, she can't keep off weight. Oh boy. When the food shortage just hit, you're gonna know trauma. <laughs> Moving right along. All right, before we roll this one, I gotta give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. Very grateful to announce we have one sponsor today. Today's video is being brought to us by Chaney Kane. Chaney, thank you so much for sponsoring today's video. Chaney wanted to give a shout out to the Donald, Donald Trump for this sponsor. So absolutely, Chaney, we can shout out Donald Trump. Now, as much as I believe that voting isn't going to save us from what's happening, I think there's only one way out of this mess and it's not good. I'm not going to get into it now. However... If Trump is running in 2024, I mean, that may be our, you know, our last hope there. As I said, I don't think voting's going to work. But, but, big shout out. Cheney says you want to shout out Donald Trump for sponsoring this video. So you got it, Cheney. Thank you so much. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, if you would like to sponsor the next video and help support the channel, there's a PayPal link in the description box below. I will say your full name as a sponsor of said video unless stated otherwise by you. If you guys want to shout somebody out, shout anybody out, sh shout a store out, a YouTube channel, anything like that, that's how we're going to do it. You got it. So, Chaney, once again, thank you. The comment says, it seems like the body positivity, com the body positive community is only exclusive to those who are fat only. Love yourself by all means. Roll the film. Actually, the body positivity movement was created in the 1960s by fat black women. Um, it was created to fight against the dangerous discrimination that fat bodies face, particularly fat black femmes. So I feel like a guest in the body positivity movement myself. I'm a white woman who's a size 22. 
I have white privilege. That's massive because fat phobia is rooted in racism. That's just true. Look it up. Read. Um, but as a size 22, I can comfortably fit in an airplane. I can fit in most like chairs at a restaurant. I can find clothes that fit me. But discrimination I do face and that fat people do face, that mid-sized people do not face, is that crash testing cars, medical studies, scientific research, dosing medications, fat people are left out of that research altogether. Not to mention fat people will make less money annually than their thin counterparts of equal education and skill level. It's not just about loving your body. You need to think critically about What the fuck does that even mean? When they get to the part about fat phobia being rooted in racism and white privilege, and that's it. I, I immediately stop listening to a word she said. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> All right, this one's an older one. I played it before. I just have to play it again for those of you guys that ha haven't heard it yet. This person talks so much and doesn't say a damn thing. Roll the film. The obesity epidemic isn't real and it shouldn't be an anti-capitalist talking point. When someone unironically references the obesity epidemic or even uses the word obesity, it tells me they really don't know what they're talking about when it comes to fatness. This use of the word obesity stems directly from the BMI, which was created by a eugenicist with no medical training who based the scale only on white bodies and cow math. Fatness is not an epidemic. Fat people existed before capitalism and before colonization. Fat phobia is a direct result of anti-blackness, and it has deadly consequences for many groups of indigenous folks and other people of color, as well as fat folks. When you make the obesity epidemic a real symptom of capitalism, you are not only ostracizing fat people from anti-capitalist thinking, but also actively ignoring that the health outcomes related to obesity are more accurately attributed to food deserts and fat phobic discrimination in healthcare. The obesity epidemic was created by Western medicine to avoid addressing the actual causes of health inequity, which is what we as anti-capitalists should be doing. Holy cow. No offense, but you are a stupid asshole. Just, just because these people get all the buzzwords in there with the virtue signaling doesn't mean they know what they're talking about. It says on there, with no medical training who only based the scale on white bodies and cow math. Cow math. What is cow math? Holy cow. <laughs> now we're going to be ending it soon. I can't take much more of this. All right, this lady doesn't think that being overweight has to do with health. I, I, I think. I don't know. Roll the film. One of the most common questions I get is how can you say there's no relationship between weight and health? And first of all, virtually nobody is saying that. What I and many other fat activists are saying, and in fact, we're begging people to understand this, is that as it stands in the current research, the relationship between weight and health is correlational, not causal. So some research methods 101. When two things are correlated, it means that they're happening at the same time. It does not mean that one thing is causing the other thing. For example, there's a very strong correlation between male pattern baldness and heart attacks, which is true. Now, based on that information, should we ascertain that baldness causes heart attacks? Should we try to get bald men to grow hair in an effort to reduce their likelihood of having a heart attack and then blame them when they can't do it? No, because what's actually happening is that a third factor seems to be at play, which contributes to both baldness and heart attacks. What I'm suggesting is that we look much more closely at the third factors at play when it comes to weight and health. For example, fat people frequently have our blood pressure taken with blood pressure cuffs that are too small. The problem with that is that when you use a cuff that's too small, it will always result in a false high reading. And this happens all the time. So these are the kinds of things I think about when someone says that fat people have higher rates of hypertension. I think... Of course we do. We are constantly getting false high readings. And more broadly, there are a number of very influential third factors that contribute to the overall trend of health problems for fat people, such as weight stigma, also known as the stress of discrimination, something that fat people experience a lot. Another is weight cycling. Virtually all fat people have tried to lose weight at some point in our lives, but pursuing weight loss is a virtual guarantee that someone will experience weight cycling, which is extremely hard on the body. And finally, we have inaccessible, inequitable, and biased healthcare. Fat people experience all of these things, and all of them contribute to illness. But despite all of these third factors discrimination, stress, weight cycling, limited healthcare, biased healthcare, incompetent healthcare, and a lack of proper medical equipment 
the cultural conversation around weight and health refuses to evolve. People, especially thin people, tend to be very committed to upholding fat phobia. People are just more comfortable believing that fat people do bad things and that leads to bad health and thin people do good things and that leads to good health. Turns out the pushback that I get on this topic, it's not really about health. It was fat phobia all along. Guys. I wanna die, you fat. Whoa, 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 whoa. No need for name calling. You don't need to yell out the window of your pickup truck and call these people names. Ah. I apologize. That clip was far too long. I just had to I had to play it till the end so you guys could hear what this lady was saying. It has nothing to do with health, but fat phobia all along. Like, ugh. Really? Surely you can't be serious. <laughs> yeah, that's the sad part. These people are serious. She calls herself a fat activist. I don't know. Maybe they know they're talking a bunch of nonsense who knows anymore moving right along all right we're, tr trust me we're almost done here guys what do we got somebody what's that paragliding or something through the canyons with a parachute let's see where this goes roll the film and see this really brings us to what is really my only problem with skinny people's what are you guys doing i tried to get life insurance the other day because i thought i had leukemia long story we'll get to it eventually but when i was filling out the forms they had a weight section i turned it in they said guess what bud you have to lose weight before we will give you life insurance because you're morbidly obese but these i did not see anywhere on the forms where there was a question was like oh do you and your buddy blaine go out to the bluffs on saturday i don't know what that is is it a bluff a crevasse i don't know what a crevasse even fucking is do you guys go out there and paraglide with silk sheets naked trying to mow the lawn of these hills with your bare asses what the fuck? i don't understand how my lifestyle is dangerous the most the only thing i'll do to this that's similar is the lazy river and the only thing that's dangerous about the lazy river is you're gonna get pink eye and athlete's foot every single time ban skinny people mm, boy are you fat he's an angry elf All right, so this guy wants to ban skinny people. He said it himself. Ban skinny people. Um, he's he's very angry, very angry that he can't get a life insurance policy or, or some, something like that. Um, I happen to notice something since I started doing these TikTok reaction things. Uh, I happen to notice, and I looked around. I made a, you know, I I noticed that I don't see very many, if any at all, obese or morbidly obese elderly people I, I, I just don't maybe i don't know so maybe that has something to do with the life insurance i don't know that was just an observation i made where i live it could be different out there i i don't know moving right along this clip's it's, it's strange we've had this lady on a couple of videos in the past and they've all been the same thing one of them she was trying to get into a little compact car one of them she's trying to get into something else this one she's trying to get into an SUV or pickup truck, it looks like it's raised up. And she's so overweight that it's like takes everything she has. It's, I don't, this is, this is not good. It's not good. Roll the film. Okay, one, two, three. Oh my God. So easy. So easy. <laughs> Do it all the time. Let's go. Oh, wait. Was she a great big fat person? Holy cow. <sighs> uh, that's, uh, that's not good. That's sad. That makes, I mean, that's sad. I, I don't know. Moving right along. All right, this is going to be the last clip. <laughs> I can't take any more. So if you made it this far, give yourselves a round of applause, a pat on the back. You guys know I cannot do this alone. So thank you for trudging ahead with me. And like I said, it's been a while since I did the plus size TikToks. Wanted to switch it up a little bit. Um, so if if you don't enjoy these ones, I apologize. I try to, you know, I try to sw space it out a little bit so we don't get uh, bogged down with too much of the woke stuff. It all kind of intertwines, I know. But um, anyway... And as I said at the beginning, do not get triggered. This has nothing to do with you. It's not about you. It's not targeted at you. It, so don't get triggered. And do not let anybody 
live in your house rent free like this. It says, show me someone who lives in your house rent free. This is. Oh boy. Anyway, I'm out of here. Till next time. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Love you guys. Peace. Roll the film, please. Show me someone that lives in your house rent free. Oh my God, look at that whale. Boy, are you fat. All men and women created by the, go, you know the, you know the thing.